Today we're talking real-time ray tracing, but not the kind you might expect. You've no doubt heard all about ray tracing lately. It's that tech that takes tame domestic lighting, shadows and reflections, and turns them into photorealistic representations of in-game objects in real time. Grand! But rather than the DX12-powered, hardware accelerated ray tracing solutions we have today, we're going to be delving into one powered by, drumroll please, Intel. Yes, an RTX graphics card is no longer a necessity for ray tracing. Your CPU is a pretty smart cookie, and will get by just fine doing some of the calculations necessary for realistic shadows. And the strangest bit of all, turns out AMD's Ryzen chips are a dab hand running Intel's ray tracing libraries. This one's truly got it all. Intel, AMD, Nvidia, ray tracing, Jacob, Dave. So let's get to it. Real-time ray tracing has crept into the public eye since Nvidia launched its RTX 20 series graphics cards. Featuring dedicated ray tracing hardware, or RT cores, these GPUs have been the only ticket to realistic shadows, reflections, and lighting since their inception. But no longer, at least in one game. The World of Tanks devs are trying a different approach, one which leverages your underutilized multi-core CPU and doesn't require Microsoft DXR, DirectX 12, or an NVIDIA RTX GPU. Yeah, World of Tanks has officially launched the tech demo for Encore RT, its homegrown ray tracing solution based on Intel's Embry ray tracing library. And in today's vid, we're going to delve into just how they go and done it. Encore RT is a unique approach to ray tracing created by the World of Tanks devs, bringing ray trace shadows to the game's main protagonist, tanks. While limited in scope in-game, the effect only applies shadows to factory-perfect tanks in direct sunlight, what's special about its implementation is that it does not require Windows 10, DirectX 12, or ray tracing accelerated hardware. You can get by with just DX11 hardware, opening up ray tracing to hardware spanning years back. Just bear in mind that the devs can't guarantee you'll get great performance out of extremely old or budget tech. So yeah, kind of sorry about that. But you can see for yourself in the newly released tech demo. There are four levels of RT available to choose from, ultra, medium, low, and off. I mean, off doesn't really count as a level of RT. Yeah, it is. It's not there at all. Okay. Low offers hard shadows or the noisiest variety, medium offers soft shadows, and ultra offers the softest shadows like a freshly fluffed pillow with the most denoising your GPU can muster. And the reason for passing on DXR and RTX, according to the devs, it didn't want to limit its players on aging tech, which is a large portion of its audience. Since its announcement a few weeks ago, we've been pondering how the world of tax devs worked ray tracing into the game without the need for DirectX 12. They are the first to bypass NVIDIA's RTX graphics cards. Crytek demoed its Ray Trace CryEngine Neon Noir demo earlier this year with an AMD RX Vega 56. But after staring at a whiteboard for weeks and considering all the possible options and combinations of tech, we decided it would be much easier to just go and ask the devs themselves. So we did that. We spoke with Bronislav Slavigo and Denis Ishmog Hamatov of the World of Tanks render team who told us it's all rather easy once you know the basics of ray tracing. There are three stages to ray tracing a game in real time. Stage one, preparing traditional geometry for real time ray tracing. The initial stage is taking your rendered scene and breaking it into easily digestible BVH structures. BVH stands for Bounding Volume Hierarchy, and essentially it's Russian stacking dolls for polygons. These are key to keeping computational costs low when you start tracing rays within a scene. And that's stage two, blasting a number of rays per pixel through a scene to see where they intersect with BVH and the polygons stored within. With the knowledge of how a light source intersects a scene, you can now add in lighting effects, shadows, reflections, or any number of combination of those effects. The third stage is simple, denoising. Ray traced effects can get awfully noisy and someone's got to tell them to shut the hell up. What's crucial to understand about these three stages is that they can all be offloaded to different hardware in your machine. Nvidia RTX GPUs built using the Turing architecture offload all three stages to a ray tracing process onto the GPU's CUDA cores, or dedicated RT cores. But World of Tanks does it differently. While stage two and three, tracing and denoising, are left to the GPU's cores, the first stage, BVH construction, is offloaded to your CPU's spare logic cores. Games don't tend to use all of your CPU cores. In fact, they use a paltry few and leave the rest twiddling their thumbs. That's why single core performance still comes out on top in gaming benchmarks, and hence why Intel's 8 core Core i9 9900K still beats AMD's 12 core Ryzen 9 3900X. In the words of the world of tank devs, we thought that it would be wise to utilize all of that because in the games that use hardware acceleration, they use the GPU for BVH construction, so they put a lot of pressure on the GPU. We wanted to distribute that among the CPU and GPU. Or in the words of Samwise Gamgee, Share the load. Share the load. The load. But how does Intel fit into all of this? 
Well, aside from spitting out CPUs, the company puts together a lot of software, largely bundled into libraries. Intel's One API is a collection of all of those libraries, yet for the Encore RT, we need only one, Intel Embree. Intel Embree is a collection of ray tracing kernels, sounds like cheese. Embree. It's developed by Intel and releases open source code for all to use. It's mostly developed for offline rendering, the type used by professionals for many years, but within its code lies one very important function necessary for Encore RT, the bit necessary for constructing BVH on any available CPU threads. Bingo, now you're thinking with CPU cores. Oh, I get it, on core, yeah, on yeah, so core. There we go. And cool. not just Intel CPU cores either. Since Embry is open source and free from proprietary shenanigans, you can run it just fine on AMD CPUs too. In fact, despite some optimizations for Intel chips, it's actually faster on the Red Team's tech. We've put AMD and Intel's best silicon to the test in the World of Tanks Encore RT demo, and to our surprise found that AMD Ryzen silicon is a little faster than Intel's, despite the home team's clock speed advantage. For all runs, the benchmark test was set to ultra across the board, graphics, anti-aliasing, and ray tracing. Intel's i9-9900K managed a self-referential score of 15,229 during the run, while AMD's Ryzen 7 3700X, a similarly 8-core chip, managed 16,610. A relatively slight advantage, but an advantage nonetheless. Since Encore RT was built specifically to utilize dormant cores in your CPU, we also put this to the test. In our testing, the 12-core, 24-thread Ryzen 9 3900X scored 16,659, surprisingly little improvement over the 8-core AMD chip. The same can be said for Intel's 6-core i7-8700K, which managed 15,151, only a little shy of the 8-core i9-9900K. So while there's some improvement shifting to a higher core count chip, it's minimal at best, and we're still yet to see any gaming workload truly test the best gaming CPUs going. So now you know how the photorealistic sausage is made. Ray tracing is still an emergent rendering tech in gaming, and don't we know it, but efficient co-processing models are the future of computing, a vast interconnected web of accelerators, CPUs, GPUs, and FPGAs, all communicating with one another at speed, and offloading workloads to the most efficient chip for the job is likely how we'll see the computational might of ray tracing eased in the future. It's a hell of a sausage. And if we want to see greater utilization of CPUs in ray tracing tasks, Microsoft DirectX Ray Tracing, or DXR, is going to have to be the place for it to happen, especially once the next-gen Xbox launches with hardware accelerated ray tracing and devs really starting to pick up speed developing for it. And while it may seem like Intel's tech encroaches Nvidia's turf, it kind of isn't. Hardware acceleration on a GPU will always top general purpose cores at their specific task, and so far only Nvidia GPUs have the silicon required to do that. So, if greater efficiency can be achieved through open source integrations elsewhere in the ray tracing process, such as BVH construction, that only serves to benefit Nvidia, AMD, and Intel. Oh, and you playing the game too. And don't forget, AMD is planning to add hardware acceleration with RDNA 2, the second iteration of AMD Navi. And Intel is preparing its own discrete card as well, Intel Z, which may or may not have ray tracing and may or may not be called Intel XE. Mm. Intel's been super weird about it. Well, we hope you've enjoyed today's video, and as always, like, subscribe to the channel, and ring that bell if you'd be so kind. Also, check out PCGamesN.com for the latest in hardware and gaming. Thank you so much for watching, have a wonderful week, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.